Yes, lads, what's happening? And welcome to the 28th episode of the Little Running Irish Run podcast. So, in this episode, you know the gist by now, we go over the week of training. But in this episode, we have a little bit more to talk about uh, stuff that happened in the run world lately. So, make sure to stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about it. But if you're watching this on YouTube, the first thing you may have noticed is what's on my head. I got a brand new uh, running half from Clonin Farriers, the, the team I run for, obviously. I also have my mate Johnny in running. Uh, if you follow me on Little Running Irish from that official on the Instagram, you'll see I put a picture up that the that my hat broke. Basically, the, uh, the gold thing here on the back of your hat where you put the strap in to keep the strap down basically snapped off and um, I don't know how it did it it just it just happened one day and I was really disappointed because even the lads in Roman said that's like the thing like my mates at Roman said that's the thing like I'm known for basically and I absolutely loved that hat uh, I had it I had it for like four years absolutely loved it but my mate Johnny was kind enough to give me this hat um, for me to keep and I absolutely love it I think the the black and red uh, I hate saying this but the black and red I think is nicer than the not the black and red the black and orange sorry is nicer than the denim and orange so thanks Johnny for giving me this hat I hope y'all like it so uh, it's easy on the eye to look at anyway if you're watching this on YouTube but yeah absolutely love this hat thanks very much Johnny uh, for giving it to me but after we talk about the week of training, uh, we have other things to talk about, things that happen, uh, one thing anyway, that happened in the running world. But before we get into the talking about the week of training, we actually have nothing to talk about. It was literally just a hassle. So we can just get into the week of training straight away. I don't think this has ever happened really. I'm not sure. Maybe the first few times I've done this, I just spoke out the week of training straight away and that's it. But today, we're definitely just diving straight in uh, to the week of training. Uh, off the bus, so let's just get into it. Monday, as you all know, 50 minute run, 9.81k, 5, 5 minutes 0 seconds, uh, per, uh, no, 5 minutes 6 seconds per kilometer, or 6.10 miles, uh, 6.10 miles, at 8 minutes 12 seconds per mile. Felt okay, legs were a bit heavy. I remember this run, I went a different route than I usually do. Legs were a little bit heavy, but I was kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of frustrated that they were a bit heavy, so I just went harder, and I ended up feeling pretty decent, got a solid run in, Monday was 16 degrees Celsius with 70% humidity, definitely wasn't the warmest, this week wasn't the warmest week um, overall, but Monday was a solid run, and yeah, happy I got that in, comparing it to last Monday's run, which was 9.55k at 5 minutes 18 seconds per kilometre, or five minute, uh, or 5.93 miles at 8 minutes 32 seconds per mile, and um, uh, keeping in consideration when I'm c- comparing these two weeks, last week was a week of training just after a week break, so last week might be a bit slower, and probably it are a bit slower than this week, just due to the fact that um, it's after a week off, so that definitely played a part in my fitness last week, but moving on from Monday, we go on to Tuesday, which was, I know last week you guys are looking forward uh, to... Uh, to this Sunday's episode of the podcast because I'm talking about the first time ever on the podcast uh, after 28 episodes I'm talking about a session and uh, not talking about a session but talking about a recent session that happened with the team this is the first time I'm talking about a session that happened with the team on Sunday's episode so that is that's mad because when I started this we were in quarantine and no actually when I started the podcast we weren't quarantined uh, but when I started the actual series as such or the, the episodes where I started talking about my week of training I um we were in quarantine then so I wasn't training with the team and um, so this is the first ever uh time on the podcast that we're talking about being with the team and um uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a milestone you could say maybe uh, in the podcast and I know when I mentioned it when well, me and all mentioned it on Thursday in Thursday's episode of the podcast and you guys loved that episode and um, uh, that chill kind of episode at no script just having a conversation uh, with one of my mates about running about life and everything you guys seem to love that I loved it I loved it it was it was gas crack yeah it was just a bit of a laugh if you liked it leave it down in the comment section below or if you want to give it a listen or a watch go over and do so it is a great episode Um, it's really funny so make sure to give it a listen but thanks for the support on that episode but yeah Tuesday first session back with the team was an absolute bang one not just a session not just the running part 
the banter with the laugh with the with the lads. I was getting a bit of a abuse for the podcast. Um not abuse, just a bit of banter. All the lads seemed to like it, so I'm happy with that. Even my coach uh likes it and he was even telling me a few lads to get on to the podcast and I'm definitely working on a few um uh, more people coming on to the podcast very soon, so make sure to stick around for that. But yeah, no, the banter was great. A uh, lot of catching up to do. Uh, there was, yeah, as I said, banter about the podcast. And even the session was a great one, which I know you guys are looking forward to hear about. So, when I got there, we we done a few hurdle drills, warm-up. and um, Not like jumping or anything, you know, just stepping over the hurdles and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, a few hurdle drill, uh, drills to warm up our legs and get a bit loose. Before we went out for a 15-minute um, jog for our warm-up, came back, done a few stretches and strides and got into our 10 by 400 meter session on the track this is our favorite session on the track well mine anyway apparent maybe from 20 by 200 i remember we done that uh two or three times last year or the year before i think and yeah i like that session but now love the 10 by 400 meter session uh, i wore the nike zoom vapor uh, not the nike zoom vapor flies the nike uh, zoom streak sevens and um, the view coming on them next week I'm going to try to get that out next week. I know there's been a few things getting in the way. Obviously, it took a week off, the injury and everything. So after doing the 5K time trial and a session on the track with them, review coming next week. Make sure to stay tuned. I know I'm putting pressure on myself saying that. I have I have like a, a lot of it planned already, but make sure to stay tuned. Subscribe. This will not be a podcast, only on the channel. Make sure to subscribe and put turn on the notification bell for the Zoom Streak 7 review coming next week. Looking forward to it. So, 10 by 400 meters on the track, as I said. Averaged about 74 to 75 seconds for each. Now, keep in mind, before uh, the last session on the track before... Uh, we weren't able to train due to the pandemic. I was getting 74 to 75, but it was kind of coming easier, coming a bit natural, uh, more natural to me, uh, because there are the times we kind of aim at for each rep. So it, not being training on the track for such a long time, and with being my first session back on the track in a long time, uh, I was a bit rusty, but definitely enjoyed it. Got it done. Tough session, but now it was a, a tough but solid session. Really enjoyed it, and. Um, for the cool down, we done four slow laps um on the infield for the cool down, uh, the opposite way that we were running. So when we're on the track, as you know, you turn left each time. So for the cool down, we turn right each time just to even it out on the legs. Yeah, as I said, decent session, uh, decent, solid, tough session. Great crack with the lads and happy to be back on the track once again on Tuesday. We are doing 10 by 400 um, on the track down com- Tuesday coming. So make sure to stay tuned to see here, here if I do better next Tuesday or not. When I say I average 74 to 75 seconds for each, uh, uh, sometimes it didn't go above 75, but it could have gone to like 72, 73, 74, 75, between that range. But it was mostly average between 74 and 75 seconds. So Tuesday was 17 degrees Celsius at 75% humidity. And um, during the day, it was uh, drizzling and raining uh, during the day and uh, pretty windy. But when it came to the evening, it came to the session, it was it was it was nice. Day. It wasn't too warm, wasn't too cold. Little drizzles of rain here and there. Feel like a weatherman here saying all this. But no, it was great uh, running weather any but. Uh, I cannot compare this to last Tuesday session because it's a completely different session. Last Tuesday I done three by four minutes on, or four by three minutes on with ninety seconds recovery. So I cannot compare the sessions. Uh, but yeah, two solid uh, Tuesday sessions uh, over the last two weeks. Anyway, so Wednesday was a forty-five minute recovery run after all of quarantine. Not after all of quarantine. During all of quarantine, this is my slowest. Uh, not my slowest. My uh, shortest uh, run so obviously as you know Friday rest day and Saturday and Tuesday are sessions so all the other days uh, Monday Wednesday Thursday and Sunday which are runs uh, I'll usually do 50 minutes during the week and 60 minutes on a Sunday 45 minutes recovery run is what our coach told us to do for Wednesday five minutes less uh, this week uh, but it was a 8.49k 
at 5 minutes 25 seconds per kilometer or 5.28 miles at 8 minutes 42 seconds per mile just went slow as i said it was a recovery run from the track session and with it being my first session back on the track uh, in a long long time i wanted to go slow and get a good recovery run in so that is what i done it uh, felt okay not the best just got it done at the end of the day wednesday was 18 degrees celsius with 70 percent humidity so comparing that to last wednesdays oh actually i didn't realize this last wednesday i forgot i had work so i did not run last wednesday so obviously i can't compare it to last wednesday but so moving on to thursday we have 50 minutes and um, once again back on the 50 minute grind and uh, 9.91 k at five minutes six seconds per kilometer and um, uh, so that's 6.16 miles around eight minutes 13 seconds per mile good run felt decent went along nicely didn't push and was getting getting some good times there for a per k and per mile getting some solid distance in as well thursday was 16 degrees celsius with 76 percent humidity so once again as i said not the warmest this week but comparing this thursday's run to last thursday's run last thursday was 50 minutes 9.84 k at 5 minutes 7 seconds per kilometer uh, or 6.12 miles at 8 minutes 13 seconds per mile uh, last week went out late because obviously if you follow me on instagram at little running Irishman official you'll see you, you, i don't think you can see in the background there if you're watching on youtube new computer there it's still i have a set up and all just need to get a webcam and i've ordered a cable on amazon um it's a if fem it's a three millimeter uh, like female to male uh, microphone and headphone uh, adapter that you plug your earphones into or your headphones into to be able to use mic and sound <coughs> coming from the computer so i'm waiting for that to come um and also i need to order a webcam because the monitor does not have one so the podcast coming very soon from the computer hopefully the webcam will um have a bit better quality i know this mic is uh, this headphone these these uh, the mic on these earphones are pretty good and the webcam isn't the worst on this laptop either but hopefully i can get set up on the computer very very soon so thursday's run this week and thursday's run last week was uh were pretty similar two solid runs so i'm happy with that moving on from thursday was friday which was a rest day a complete rest day me and my brother were uh, uh home alone so we just play i played on the computer and he played on the playstation literally all day just chilled out all day and um, it was good rest over a solid uh, week of training so far so it was a, a nice bit of a rest of the day because most days i uh, force myself to get up early like saturdays now i have to get up early uh for a session i have to get up at nine quarter past nine because i have a about a half an hour journey out to santry where i train sunday i get up at half session uh, at session half seven because um i want to get the hour run done and be able to record the podcast and post at a reasonable time um Monday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I tried to get up about half ten to uh, to get my run done. And then Friday, rest day, so I get to stay in bed a bit longer. And the same with Tuesday with my session being later in the evening. So, uh, yeah, I do try to get up pretty early um, over the course of the week. So having the rest day on the Friday does help uh, regain a bit of energy um, for, for Saturday's uh, session and Sunday's run. So on the topic of Saturday, we had the session. With the team again, this was yesterday. We done a light 15 minute uh, jog warm up. The, we also done some stretches and strides after the session was 4.1k and um, 4.1k. What was that? 4 by 1k. Sorry, uh, was the session. Uh, the first rep was 331, second was 326.6. The third one was 337.8 and the fourth one was 335.6. I forgot to say the first one was actually 331.8. Forgot to say the point D. Um, solid session. All the lads done really, really well. Uh, everyone was feeling good. First uh, cross country session back in the park with the team. And um, Mick seemed to be happy with me. I was happy with a solid, solid session. Uh, yeah, uh, I took the lead on the few of them. I was feeling good, so I took the lead. Went out hard, especially on the second one with a 326.6. Um, but no, solid session. Saturday was 15 degrees Celsius at 80% humidity. Saturday was uh drizzling a bit uh, especially earlier in the morning before i went out for the session and um, 
but when I stepped outside, it was very humid, uh, it was quite warm, so uh, it was perfect running weather, it wasn't freezing or anything, um, so it was great, great running weather. Uh, after the session, we'd done a light 15 minute cool down, felt good, as I said, it was going along nicely, solid session with the lads. Cannot compare it to last Saturday session as that was a 15 minute tempo, but just like the two Tuesday sessions, this Tuesday and last Tuesday, two solid uh, Saturday sessions in uh, consecutively consecutively in the bag so I'm happy with that moving on to Sunday it uh, was a 60 minute run uh, today so 11.17k or for, uh, no and 5.3 uh, 5.3 5 minutes 33 seconds per kilometer. Sorry, absolutely jumbling up my words there. Uh, or 6.94 miles at 8 minutes 56 seconds per mile. Today was 18 degrees Celsius at 78% humidity. When I went out, that's 78% humidity. I uh, yeah, was jumbling up my words there. So, yeah, 78% humidity. Uh, was was pretty sunny when I went out uh, earlier. Uh, no, uh, decent run. When I say it, actually it wasn't, it was a very bad run, felt bad, legs felt heavy from the session uh, on Saturday, but I got it done, just went slow, but I didn't feel great at all. Comparing that to last Sunday's run, last Sunday it was 10.81k at 5 minutes 33 seconds per kilometre, or 6.72 miles at 8, uh, 8 minutes 56 seconds per mile. Last Sunday I didn't feel good either, so that's two bad Sunday runs consecutively, so... Yeah, don't know what that's all about. I think it's because I get up at half seven for my runs and I just try to get it done. So my body's still a bit tired, but it doesn't matter because it's only really a recovery run. I have the rest of the day to rest and recover then after that. Even today, actually, just before recording this episode of the podcast, uh, what I never usually do, which I mentioned last week, uh, I, I napped. Uh, I had a nap when I came in. I was on my phone lying on the couch and then I just ended up going to sleep. So, so yeah, I'm energised and ready to go now. Um, so yeah, moving awesomely is... The total kilometers per the total kilometers and miles per for the week. So total kilometers this week is forty seven point three eight k. That does not include uh, warm ups and cool downs. Um, so obviously if I was to include warm ups and cool downs, it'd be a little bit longer than that. That comes to total miles. That comes to twenty nine point four one miles. So solid solid week of training. Definitely not my furthest, um, but no, solid week overall back with the team. Um, and yeah, comparing that to last week's total miles, I know I definitely didn't do a lot last week. Yeah, um, t- over 10 kilometers extra this week, 37.84 miles, uh, 37.84 kilometers, sorry, last week, and 23.51 miles, uh, last week as well. So definitely done more last week. That's because, uh, my sessions, both my sessions were equivalent to, uh, together were equivalent to 8k, uh, also I didn't run last Wednesday, so that took uh, about nine, 8 or 9k off um, off the total uh, distance for the week, so that's why this week is further than last week, uh, and yeah, at the start of the episode, if you remember, I said there is something I wanted to talk about in the run world, and that is the impossible games, now if you are big into running, or you like watching running, you like watching sports and you're desperate for a bit of sport on the telly right now, you probably tuned in to watch the impossible games. I I definitely did watch it. It was the impossible games basically it, it was it was in Oslo in Norway. Uh basically it, it was it it wasn't it was just it was kinda of like oh, I'm trying to think what it was. It was it was an event uh to to like to keep people entertained basically there was no fans they actually had a cardboard cutouts as fans don't know why it took me so long to decide what that actually was basically it was to keep people entertained and not only that it was taking like random events that are never ran so uh basically there was many great events and but as i said random events that are never ran like the 300 meter hurdles that is never ran but it was ran um on his own karsten warholm a norwegian at the set a new world record in the 300 meter hurdles and he 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 set a a zero point second uh world record he said he took that off um Britain's Chris Rawlinson, Rawlinson in 2002, he said that, clocking at 33.78 in Oslo. So, 0.7 seconds off, um, off the previous world record. So, yeah, 
definitely a lot of records went down here um, in the Impossible Games. Now, it was in Oslo, but the main event uh, and another record that went down that everyone tuned in for was Team Inga Britain versus Team Chariot. Um, Actually, I just want to apologize for when I was uh, jumbling up my words and not even I took like a break trying to think what this was That's actually really annoying me there, but yeah, we've gotten over it moving on and um, Yeah, I definitely focused on the 2k uh, Team Ingerbritton versus Team Chariot race virtual virtual race and um, when I say virtual basically Team Chariot were over in Kenya and Team Inga Britain were in Oslo, Norway. They, it was basically a split down the middle of the two running the race. Um, and yeah, it was a great, great race. Obviously, the conditions in Kenya were absolutely horrible. It was windy, wet, rainy, and they're at higher altitudes. So when it's raining, it makes the track heavier and usually becomes slower. They were running into a headwind. They didn't have a tailwind. It was a headwind. So that obviously... Um, played a big huge part in the outcome of the race and also the Kenyans were obviously running at altitude so that obviously even though they train at altitude it would still take a bit more out of you than if they were training in, in uh, running in Oslo like the Ingebrigtsen brothers but nonetheless it was a great event and a great race um yeah as i said it was split down the middle see it the team uh team cherry on the left and team Ingebrigtsen on the right and i have a, a link a tab open here uh, to to the race, so I'm gonna throw it on now, and I'm gonna uh, talk to you, to talk to everyone, and talk to you through basically. No matter if you're watching or listening to the podcast, talk to you through uh, the the race a bit. So let's just jump straight into it. Uh, here we go. Oh, yeah, here we go. So uh, the team in Britain went through 400 meters in 58.91. The team Cherry and uh, team in Britain both had two pacers. Team Chariot went through um it went through 400 meters in 54.54. So that's an absolutely mad fast start. If they held that to the finish, they would have got a time of 4:32. Um, the 4:32. The current world record is 4 minutes 46, 44 seconds, 0.79 seconds. So, um, if you watched it, you know the world record did not go down. That is an absolutely insane time, but as I said, this race is never is never a uh, run. So if it was run more, that that time would definitely go down, and especially with fans and um, with fans and more competition, uh, that that record would definitely go down. The European record now uh, stood at uh, four fifty one forty, and that it, that was the world record uh, for uh, for basically. Uh, before this event, sorry, um, and uh, yeah, Jakob Inger Britain did end up breaking that, but I'll tell you what time he broke that in now in a minute. Um, as in, uh, I'm watching it here, Team Chariot 800 meters split was a time of 155.56. Chariot ran uh, through 800 meters in 155.56, and Team Inger Britain ran through 800 in one one minute 57 seconds, 79 milliseconds. Um, so here, Team Inger Britain, uh, Jakob is sitting on the back of the pacer. Uh, the 1200 meter split for Team Chariot was 257.15, and the 1200 meter split for uh, Team Inger Britain or Jakob and uh, Hendrik anyway was uh, 257. So right now uh, the team Chariot is in the lead, and the, the team Britain need to pick up the pace a little bit. And um, but team Chariot are definitely struggling. Well, Chariot is anyway. There's a mad gap uh, between all three of the all three of the athletes um, due to the conditions. But coming in to the last hundred meters uh, of the the second last lap, the pacer sets uh, steps off and. It's Jakob and Hendrik up the top and Philip about 10, 10, 20 meters behind them. Jakob coming in, finishing the race very, very strongly, looking well, well ahead of Cherry and sets and uh, sets a 16 meter, 1600 meter split um, of what was that? Hold on, let me check. Of 3:55.85, so mad, mad time. Broke four minutes there. Uh, that's just a little thing. Obviously, that's that's a. Uh, pretty much easy for him if he's doing that in a 2k in a 2k race but i just i just wanted to point that out and a two in a one mile split for chariot was 401.04 so now he is a bit behind and um, 
if Jakob wants to break the European record, he'll have to run under a 56 second last lap to break that record and he's only picking it up from here. Uh, in the back straight now, starting to form a bit of a gap on his brother Hendrik and Philip is about now 50 metres behind him. Uh, and now starts to kick coming into the final straight, only getting faster from here. His final lap was 54.19 and he sets a new record of 50, uh, 450.19. Uh, 04 new European record uh, that's an absolutely insane time Jakobinja Britain once again uh, set a new record this is the second race he ran of the 2020 season uh, I, I mentioned when I was on the episode dedicated to Jakobinja Britain I spoke about his 5k uh, race there a few, uh, last month I think it was or the start of June he set a new uh, European 5k road uh, record um, so if you want to find out more about Jakob Ringerbritten himself, go listen to that episode of the podcast or watch it because it's also up on YouTube. Hen Hendrik Ringerbritten also finished in a time of 4 minutes, 53 seconds, 25 minutes seconds. So solid uh, time again from him. And Philip ended in a time of 4 minutes, 56 seconds, 53 milliseconds. Uh, a few a few metres behind uh, Hendrik and about 50 metres behind Philip. Here comes Cherry into the final straight here in a, in a, looking, struggling anyway in a time of 5.03.05. Uh, yeah, no, I'd love to see these go ahead, go head to head. I can't wait to see them go head to head, hopefully in the Olympics in 2021. In the, in the 1500, uh, cause it will be an absolutely insane race. I know you might be thinking, but if Jakob Ingebrigtsen absolutely dusted Cheria here, um, he's also obviously gonna dust him again in the Olympics. Not the case, obviously, different conditions, different feel on the day, and obviously with a crowd to push them on. So it could go either way. It, uh, hopefully when these two go head to head and um, but yeah, that is pretty much the race. Jakob Ingebrigtsen set a new, uh, European record. Of what was it? Four, four, oh, five, oh, four, four, fifty three. No, that was, that was, that was Hendrik. Jakob set a new record of four, fifty, oh, four. So I was actually, I was right. And um, that was the race, four, fifty, oh, four, new European record for, uh, for Jakob Inga Britain. Once again, setting another record. He's absolutely beast. He's an absolute animal. That's an insane time. And yeah, if they, if they, uh, if the conditions are better on another day and the competition is better and they run a 2k race again, I'm sure that record will go down a lot further and possibly break the, break the world record of, let's see if I have it here, the world record time, where is it, I should have it here, do, 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 here, just going through the video, going through the race. Yep, yeah, here we go. 2K world record is 444.79. Set by, oh, I'm gonna absolutely mess this guy's name up. He Cham El, oh, it was He Cham El Garouge. I looked at all the letters and I didn't, I didn't re realize it was El Garouge. Set by uh, He Cham El Garouge, a uh, world class athlete. I'm expecting more of these 2k races uh, and like the 300 meter hurdles and more of these mad races to be run in the future after the impossible games and a lot of these records I'm expecting to go down very soon hopefully but that's what I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about the impossible games and there's loads the, 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 there was live streams of it and I'm pretty sure on YouTube and all you can go back and watch a full live stream of it if you would be interested in that but I just wanted to touch on it a little bit one because it's a uh, big news a uh, late big and the latest news in the running world second because if I didn't this episode would have been mad mad short and third of all because uh, Jakob Britain set a new European record and absolutely Absolutely dusted Team Chariot, but as I said, the conditions were um, were pretty tough for the Kenyan team. So uh, I'm not going to be making any any assumptions that Jakob Britain would dust them on a better day. But moving on from the impossible games, we have my favourite segment of Sunday's episode, the question of the week. Uh, this week, the question is, what do I consider my biggest achievement in running? Um, I I have personally a, a lot of achievements. Uh, well, not being cocky or anything, but I'm not the greatest runner, obviously, um, out there uh, right now. I'm working hard. I'm, I'm aiming for that. But yeah, definitely not the greatest runner out there at the moment for my age group. Um, 
but personally i feel i've uh, pretty good achievement uh my recent 5k time of 18 minutes 48 seconds uh i'm just saying right and now the lads are listening to this except for one lad in my age i have the best 5k time i'm just saying uh out of andrew kigo uh, uh owen i have the best 5k time just saying, I know if they're listening to this, uh, I'm going to get dusted now uh, on Tuesday in the session, uh, if they're listening to this. But, except for one lad, Sean Boyne, he's an absolute beast. Um, I have the best 5k time of 18 minutes, 48 seconds. And, you never know, with the train I'm putting in now, that will be, uh, and the condition that was on uh, the day I ran this uh, 5k time, could end up breaking that record uh, by a good bit in the future. So, make sure to stay tuned for that. But, yeah. Uh, I'm happy with that, uh, that achievement, anyway, that is one of my favourites, obviously, last year, uh, in the under-17s, uh, all Ireland's, there was, uh, the, the programme, uh, I went through, I went through having a look-see, Clonliff was there, and I had all of our names in it for our team, and then I went to Dublin, and my name was in it, so, I was representing Dublin that day, uh, last year, in the under-17s, all Ireland's, I didn't run the best, uh, if, if I became, like, top top three top four like top six ish i think is in dublin uh i would have because dublin placed second or were dublin champions no dublin were the champions uh in last year's all ireland uh, uh unfortunately i didn't make the medal placement for the dublin team uh, i was representing dublin but didn't make the medal uh placement it was a pretty privileged, uh, it was a bit of a privilege to do that. I did, uh, qualify for the Dublin team in the Dublins, uh, you place top 15 and, uh, yeah, you, you get to represent Dublin in the All Ireland. So, doing that representing my county was a big, big privilege for me and hopefully more to come and hopefully representing my country one day in any race, uh, at any age, uh, hopefully representing Ireland one day in, uh, in the future, in the near future to come. But yeah, that's why my five gate time and representing Dublin last year, what I'd say would be my two biggest achievements and um, maybe my 5k uh, pb right now might be my most favorite because my most favorite because one it was i had to put all the work in on my own i had no team around me to help me train because it was during quarantine two it was pretty warm and tough conditions on the day and three, there was no fans cheering me on. I didn't have my man and my team and my coach on the sideline cheering me on uh, on the day. Didn't have uh, didn't have any competitors to race against to push me on either. It was all me. The training the, and the, the time trial was all me. So I'm pretty proud of it. And I beat Owen and Andrew to getting a uh, break in 19 and 5K. So probably my favorite, my most Biggest achievement that I consider, uh, anyway, my biggest achievement is my 5k time. Just putting it out there, that is what I think it is. Um, but yeah, very happy with that time uh, as as my biggest achievement. So thank you for that question, uh, whoever sent me that one. Um, yeah, that was pretty much the end of this episode of the podcast. Definitely a wide variety, not a wide, wide variety, variety of topics this episode. We obviously spoke about the week of training, like we always do on some of these episodes. T- spoke about the impossible games Jakob Britain uh, again hopefully more from him to come in the future and Team Cheerio and the rest of the, the Ingebrigtsen team and uh, make sure if you like this video and you're watching it on YouTube give me a, a positive comment down below if you don't like it give me a negative comment down below and also dislike the video but if you do like this video leave a positive comment down below give me a like if you like my content subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell so you'll be uh, notified when new episodes of the podcast go up every Thursday and Sunday Sunday and uh, you'll be notified when the uh, vlogs go up and the Zoom Sheik 7 uh, review going up next week so make sure to turn on that notification bell if you're interested in that also if you're watching this on uh, uh, if you're listening to this go over to iTunes I just found this out from uh, listening to the Pushing Limits podcast if you don't know what that is it's Shane Finn Irish um uh, he's an Irish athlete, uh, he, yeah, he basically, he cycles, he, he runs, he does everything, he's a great athlete, he has a podcast, um, you go over to me uh, and look up the Little Running Irishman podcast on iTunes, you can give a rating there, if you could drop a 5 star rating over on iTunes or on Apple Podcasts, um, it, that would be absolutely, uh, highly, highly appreciated, it helps me get up the ranks in the podcast uh, ranking system anyway, once we were fourth in Apple Podcasts, 
uh, a running Irish Apple podcast. So that was a great achievement for me. Hopefully we can get back up there if everyone does leave a five star rating over on iTunes. That'd be absolutely, uh, that'd be absolutely great. Also, if if possible, go over to the Anchor website, look up the Little Running Irish Run podcast. There'll be a little button that says Listener Support. Give it a click. You can donate ninety nine cent, uh, four dollars ninety nine cent, or fourteen dollars ninety nine cent. Any donations are highly appreciated, and as I say every week, they go back into the quality of the podcast. Uh, like I said, the webcam, better microphone, better equipment to make the quality of the podcast and each episode or each video up on the channel much better. So any donations are highly appreciated. Um, I also have a TikTok. It is called The Little Running Irishman. Go over there. Give me a follow. Uh, I love making them right now. I haven't been too active on it lately, but I do have a lot of posts up there right now. So if possible, go over there. Give me a follow watch my videos and give them a like but yeah hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of the podcast i loved making it solid week of training the impossible games are on this week love talking about them hope you guys all enjoyed and i'll see you all next time bye